Hello and welcome back. My name is Ahmad Farad Yonix and this is Mastering Docker course. This is the second section titled Hello Docker. Let's have a look at common Docker use cases. When can you use Docker? Let's see. You have a computer running some version of CentOS. You installed a business application that uses glibc library version 2.12. This is a very popular library in Linux. Everything runs smoothly until the security team advises you that you must upgrade the Linux kernel to apply the latest security patches. The kernel update naturally upgrades glibc libraries because glibc are considered part of the kernel. When the kernel gets updated, the, those libraries get automatically update, updated. Once you upgrade the kernel, the business application fails to start anymore. You find out that the prerequisites of the application do not support glibc of a higher version than 2.12. And since you have changed that version to a higher one, the application ceases to start. Unfortunately, you cannot downgrade glibc libraries without downgrading the kernel itself, which might mean a complete OS reinstallation, which of course is a drastic measure. You could have easily overcome this problem by installing the software application in a Docker container. This will ensure that the application will be completely isolated from your own system libraries and resources like glibc. It's gonna, it's gonna use its own glibc version and this glibc version will, will be completely isolated from the underlying operating system. It's not going to use the glibc of the OS. It's going to use its own glibc of its own environment that has been provided by the Docker image in the Docker container used to run this application. Now you can upgrade the kernel without worrying about breaking anything. Another use case is software portability. Let's say you have an excellent piece of software that solves a business problem. For some reason, the software runs on Linux and only Linux. The company's servers are running Microsoft Windows, so what are you going to do? As a workaround, you can install Linux on a virtual machine on one of the servers. You install, for example, VMware or VirtualBox, and then you install a virtual machine, and you install CentOS on that virtual machine, for example, and then you deploy the application on that virtual machine. But this consumes a lot of resources, and the problem becomes worse when you want to create a second and, a th and third environments for like, like testing and quality assurance, which means more and more virtual machines and more and more wasted resources. So using Docker, you can solve this problem by running exactly the same software on any system. On a Windows or a Mac machine, it's going to run this exactly the same as it ran on your Linux machine. Docker only needs to create one small virtual machine, as we said, on which multiple containers can be built using much less resources than creating multiple VMs. So as you can see here, Docker has solved the problem of portability, the problem of software dependencies, and finally, software running risks. Now, more often than not, you need to install applications from untrusted sources. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are malicious, but you can take the risk of compromising your running system. There are many ways in which a process can misbehave. For example, system corruption, bugs that allow outside attackers to compromise the system, or it may leak confidential data. Running the application inside Docker ensures that it gains access to only the resources that you declaratively allow it to. Accordingly, installing untrusted software for the sake of testing or other purposes is much safer when used inside Docker than when risking your entire system. Now, we have seen when to use Docker. Let's have a look at when not to use Docker. Docker is not a silver bullet. It has its own use cases, and sometimes it is not advised to use or it cannot be used in some scenarios. Like, for example, Docker is used to run programs that are designed to run on a Linux kernel. That means that a native Windows or OS X application cannot be shipped by Docker to other systems. Let's say we have an application written in c -sharp, for example. Let's say a web application using ASP.NET, and you want to port this application to a Linux machine or an OS X machine using Docker. That cannot be done because Docker, as we said, depends thoroughly on the Linux kernel. Maybe in the future it may achieve that functionality and make the software completely portable between all operating systems, but currently Docker only works on Linux kernels, so it only ships or works with products or applications that are designed to work on Linux. Additionally, some applications, especially security-related ones, need to be run as a privileged user with full administrative capabilities. In other words, the root user. And Docker, by definition, is used to create an isolated environment where the account used has limited privileges than root. So if you want to use an application that needs root privileges or administrative privileges, it's not a good idea to use Docker for this. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to have a Docker example to get our hands dirty. So see you next.